when I first visited the factory, I felt very good. I thought maybe if I go to, to a new place, I might go like a, for a new school, but it wasn't. I almost knew everyone. It was two or three new guys, but the rest was all people from the paddock working in there. So I felt really good. I felt really, really excited about it. Uh -huh. I end up onto this shoulder. That's it. This one. I'll just step a little bit closer to it. Shit. <laughs> the Brazilian Danish pairing of Baricello and Magnussen will be one of the youngest on the F1 group. So the most friendly partnership. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> The arrival of the first of three custom-made transporters was met with an intensive inspection. The trailers will carry the three racing cars and extensive spares, and will be mobile workshops for the 26-man race crew. At £250,000 each, not including the tractor unit, every last detail was examined. The financial team's next port of call was Malaysia, where a sponsorship deal had been struck with the government's tourism program. Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad was hoping to put his country on the map. As you know, Malaysia is not uh, very well known because uh, some people think Malaysia is in uh, Africa because Malawi is in Africa, so Malaysia must be in Africa too. With additional deals from Texaco and Sanyo agreed in principle, Stuart Grand Prix were now in theory fully funded and on schedule. Four days before the launch, and commercial director Rob Armstrong and the sponsorship team were faced with potential disaster. Before I put my cards on the table. Now, my reasoning behind that is that I think we are potentially risking someone back at the ranch in the senior management position who they have to get authority from to do this deal, saying, why are we spending that much money for that little space? Let's forget this. So, so he's we a had a terrible day. We had uh, two or three deals go completely sour. And we no sooner tried to pick ourselves off the deck than we were just getting up onto our feet, or at least on our hands and knees, and then we'd get another kick. And I'm suggesting that we offer them, in return for that money, that space on the cockpit side plus the front wing flaps. We were expecting a large proposal to come from them financially to be a major player on the team, and suddenly they came up with something that was really very small. And we were depending on it. Yeah, I think I Would you accept? I, I think we may well get a situation where they don't want to be on there for the launch. When the first call came through, I thought, this can't be right. You know, you, it is a bad oh, dream. Okay. Thank you very much for your help. But no, they said, all listen, right. we're sorry. We thought we were going to be able to do it. We know you want an answer because we know you're launching. After all, we've had our invitation. We're coming along. But I'm sorry, we're not going to do it for that amount of money. We all congregated in my office at one point. And we just went through the menu of who we could go back to. And in some cases, it was going to companies that had already categorically said no, but look, somebody's just changed the goalpost on us, and if you would be interested in readdressing this, and in other words, this is Friday, could you let me know by Monday? Yeah, and of course, someone you know, wouldn't be in a position to do that. The team's future was only secured after a marathon series of telephone discussions, concluded at 4 a.m. For 24 hours, the very existence of the team had hung in the balance. Great hotel switch. The eve of the launch, and the team were racing to get SF1, the first car, ready for presentation to the world's press. It was the latest in a long succession of sleepless nights. 
we're trying to get this painted. It's going to be mighty difficult. My father's keen on that. He's still keen on it. Let me give this chap a ring. Well, yeah. 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 give him a quick call. I don't want to be filming this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit of butchery going on. It should have come out of the mould complete. By 5 a.m., the car was almost complete. It was only then that the livery could be applied for the first time. The unveiling in London was just six hours away. At 7 a.m., the SF-1 was finally delivered to the London Hotel for the launch. While frantic last-minute adjustments were made, for Barrichello and Magnussen, it was their first opportunity to compare the new car with their previous drives at Jordan and McLaren. What's the other one for? Then? Why you the same, same thing, but I mean, if you spin... Oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Some impromptu choreography was needed for the youngest member of the Stuart clan. <laughs> He's very pleased. Hands all over it. <laughs> just at the drivers, can Dylan come up? The, or, I mean, we can do the whole family if you want. It's just kind of fun having a little, little, we, little We've got to be careful not to lose the car. If we're going to do that, we've got to do it at the back. Uh, everybody at the back, right? Yeah. Now. Sure. In a gruelling nine months, the car had been conceived, designed, and constructed. It was left to Paul Stewart to announce it to the world's press. And how this has come about, may I ask Paul now to come up and tell you a little bit more before we unveil it. Paul? It has been a very tough year for us both. From the, from the bottom of my heart, <laughs> <clears throat> from, excuse me, from the bottom of my heart, I thank my father for this <laughs> tremendous opportunity. A strange day, you know. I, I was tired, <clears throat> you know. I, I, I'd been focused on that one day the whole year, um, and knowing that we had to present to the world's media something that people had been, in some cases, sneering at, hoping, or not hoping, but saying, oh, it's not going to work, the project is, is under finance, they haven't got sponsors, so on. And other people hoping and saying, yeah, we know you're going to do it, we know you're going to do it. And to be standing up there in front of the world's media, uh, knowing, with my father and I, knowing that we had done it. I mean, we, there was, no one could say that, could laugh at us. We, we knew that when we were going to uncover that car with the tartan cover, and it was there for everyone to see. And uh, it was a, an immensely proud moment. Don't put your hand in front of me. Uh, not the hand in front of me. Look at the funny man, Dylan. Dylan! 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 The evening provided an opportunity for the Stewart family to introduce the car to a different audience. Six years, six years the car looks fantastic. It absolutely looks really good. Does it go? Hope it goes. Yeah. <laughs> A week later, the SF-1 was due to make its maiden run away from prying eyes at Ford's test track in Essex. 
The shakedown test was the first opportunity for the engineers to see if the 3,000 components that make up the SF-1 would work in unison. It was left to the more experienced Rubens Barrichello to take the wheel on the car's first ever run. The track at Borum is a far cry from the world's Grand Prix circuits. The one-mile strip of somewhat uneven tarmac usually serves as a proving ground for light trucks. Despite the basic nature of the test, Barrichello was able to convey his first impressions of the car. It, goes in. it goes in pretty fast in, in the box down there, but you, you have some throttle and it's going... Yeah, but I think that is deliberate at the moment. Yeah. To no great surprise, the SF-1's debut was prematurely halted by an electronic software glitch. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I think it was a coincidence. What, do you remember what the battery said? <laughs> the car had covered less than 10 miles, but the test was judged a success. <laughs> 